uh, but it looks all right right it does what it needs to do uh, <laughs> I was like oh no great I'm already stuck before we started <laughs> so of course you're gonna leave via the gift shop uh, so right photos yes and yes desk B <laughs> there it is um, so it's like really clever see works perfectly what <laughs> pirate rights not complete without a pirate cove he's gonna do a far better job than I can with this here right so have you missed the waffle Go back and check, it's there. It's Titan all over again. <laughs> Hey everybody, how's it going? So thanks for coming along to Chachalandia episode number 13. Yes, it's episode 13. I don't think I've done a series yet where 13 has actually gone well. So who knows what horrors we're going to unlock this week. And of course, congratulations to Italy for winning the football this week. That was intense. Uh, so for my Italian fans, congratulazioni. I don't think that's right, but I tried, right? So this is our dark ride. This is what we did in the last episode. Uh, and this is still still coming. I'm still waiting for the sign and everything to come in. But yeah, if you haven't checked this out, then please do. And of course, we put this to the poll last week as to what's going to come in here. Forgive the fact we're still in night mode. But of course, we're going hyper. But what hyper? Let's find out. And just like that, we've got ourselves a hyper coaster. And of course, it's manufactured by B&M, the winners of this week's poll. And I'm just going to prove to you that this one is a hyper coaster. And we're going to come in here, go to results and look, 63 meters. And so this actually brings me quite nicely on to the first of the interesting facts, which are coming back for this episode, everybody. I've got some interesting facts about hyper coasters. <laughs> <laughs> so, the term Hyper Giga and Strata Coaster is very much used in the enthusiast world, and we take and we use that to categorise the height of roller coasters, right? So, you've got 200 feet is a Hyper Coaster, 300 feet is a Giga Coaster, and 400 feet is a Strata Coaster. Um, but actually, it doesn't mean anything over here in the UK. Those figures don't mean anything because it's in feet, and we don't use feet; we use meters. So that's 61, 91, and 121 meters, and they're not so milestoney right so it's not as nice as 200 300 and 400 and it was actually cedar point or cedar fair that coined that phrase uh, to start with and they did that so that they could market their roller coasters and it just caught on it was a thing it's a little bit like actually the spice girls were never actually called what they called you know baby posh blah 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 that was top of the pops magazine that just made it up randomly and it was just taken on and people ran with it so here we go. Here in the UK, we don't tend to refer to our coasters as Hyper Giga and Strata. I mean, we probably would because we do a bit of Americanization, but we wouldn't necessarily categorize them in 200, 300 or 400 feet. Uh, but if we did, we would have a couple um, already in the UK. Stealth being one and uh, the big one at Blackpool Pleasure Beach being the other. So anyway, let's do a tour. So we're going to start in our station. I've decided to copy uh, a very similar feeling to the GCI that we did with the station underneath um, uh, sorry, the shop underneath the station, and then of course uh, it being in the back end of the park here. You'll notice that I'm leaving some holes. Can't think why. <laughs> but of course we've got a raised station. Uh, our steps, of course, contain no more than 16 risers. You know that already. Um, and of course the back end here is exactly the same. I do just need to think of my disabled strategy and how I'm going to do that. I haven't quite thought that bit out but I do need to put a lift or something uh, something in here and then we're going to come around our first bend and into a holding break now they uh, B&M hypers will usually have something like this because the newer ones you can roll the trains back and you can then evacuate them from here if you need to it works on a similar basis as uh, the Eurofighters and everything do you don't often see it it's actually sometimes mostly safer to do it from the lift hill but they do have the ability and that's why you have a bit of a holding break that's living down here and then, of course, we're going to come up the lift hill. Now, I know that everybody is going to have an opinion about this and everybody is going to have lots of stuff to say because hypercoasters are probably the most beloved in the community. Is it hypercoaster if the drop is longer than 60 feet? Uh, sorry, 61 meters, 200 feet. Uh, I'm sure you guys are going to fight about it in the comments. Fight amongst yourselves. I don't care. As long as I'm, as far as I'm concerned, 200 feet, 61 meters is a hyper coaster. So whether that's off the ground or whether that's the the first drop, whatever, or a drop, whatever, fight amongst yourselves. It's bigger things to worry about in life. Um, so this is 63 meters as the first drop. It's profiled as closely to Candemonium as I can possibly get. Um, so the, the shaping and everything, obviously I need to do the supports, but the shaping is as close to candemonium as we're going to get. And then we come into a bunny hop. So a perfect parabolic airtime hill. And I've shown you how to do this in the Top Tips episode. It's the one where I did the 4 meter method. I talk you how to do a parabolic airtime hill. So 
you can find that there and it just it just has this special shaping and that's what gives you that real awesome floater airtime. Now, all of the hills that I've got here to get the best out of it all are taken at around 35 mile an hour. Um so uh, whatever that is in kilometers an hour, but it's about 35 mile an hour for each hill. And that's why you will find that each hill gets progressively smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller because you can have consistency in feeling and consistency in experience uh, by making them go through it at about 35 mile an hour. And so we come into a turn. Now you'll notice that this is not as uh, beautiful looking as Mako's may be. Uh, and that's because Mako's does a complete 90 degree dog leg. Um, so it has to be much tighter. It has to be much more succinct in its turn. Whereas this doesn't do 90 degrees it does whatever that angle is uh 100 degrees or 110 or whatever it is and um so for that reason the bend needs to be a little bit more drawn out than perhaps you uh perhaps you would normally and that's why this is it now this is where the first kind of trade-off comes on as well because bnm has really snappy banking when it comes around to, uh, bends and everything and planet coaster smoothing tool just gets rid of all of that snap and then if you don't get rid of that snap it feels really jagged so that's why this is a little bit drawn out a little bit more drawn out than possible but the, the banking angles are correct right so that's all that matters in this instance the banking angle to go around this bend is correct then we come into another airtime hill uh and then we come into the classic hammerhead turnaround and this took ages to perfect because they're actually much tighter than you think so they sort of bank to in this instance it banks to the left uh, yeah banks to the left and then it comes round to the right and it does a real quick swift turn and then a sudden drop so what you tend to find is that the uh the ascent into the into the crest is really shallow versus the descent out of the crest which is then uh, designed to actually pick up uh, pick up speed and then we come into a drawn out airtime hill. So whereas this one is a bit more almost ejectory, this one is definitely more floatery. And I wanted this to be the same width as this one, but a smaller height because you get so much better forces and everything. And again, it's only taken at 35 mile an hour or so. Um, and you can see this is how much momentum the train loses between here and here. Um, and then we come into a bend, which you've seen, uh, which you've seen already. Another drawn out airtime hill. Um, which is very different to a parabolic look. It's got a it's very different shape. Uh, but then we come into another parabolic. And then, of course, you can see that the difference between here and here is outstanding. And now we come into a bit of a twister layout. So I wanted this to, to have a bit of a candemonium feel to it. Um, so it comes into a, this airtime hill and it comes into a figure of eight um, or a treble clef. It depends on how you, uh, how you look at it. And then into a brake run. Now, the next update, I'm going to tell you a little bit of information about brake runs um, and how they work and everything, uh, and why sometimes you see the real massive tall ones that are up here that then come down into an angle into the station uh, versus what I've got here. So hold on to your thoughts before you say, this isn't realistic, BLMs don't end like that. Yes, they do. And I'm going to tell you why in the next update. Uh, and so then we come around to the final bend uh, and then back into the final brake run and into the station. Brake run just needs to be long enough to hold um, the three trains because it's not actually doing much speed when you get into there. Again, I'll go into the details of that in the next update. And then, of course, this is where the maintenance shed is going to be. Uh, and I've just done the queue line as well. So I wanted a relatively long queue line. There's the fast pass queue for it. Uh, relatively long queue line, nice and succinct, but I wanted it to be to have a bit of a pattern to it. So anyway, my next part port of call is to do the queue line, uh, to start the station building, to start the maintenance building and start bringing it together. So let's see how that goes. Hey, are you getting nitro vibes from this? Or maybe you're getting Canada's Wonderland behemoth. It doesn't matter. They've had a baby and it's come up with this. <laughs> That's what we're going for, right? So... Here we are. I wanted to do a generic theme on this one. I wanted this to feel like it was a little bit unloved and a little bit pushed to the back of the park. And if you have a look at the whole of Chacho Landa, you, and Landia, you can see that that's exactly what it is. It's pushed to the back. It feels like it's a bit of an afterthought and that's the entire purpose. Now, obviously this is a theme park and we've, we've ended up with very specific themed lands that have all come together, you know, Pyro and Western and blah, 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 blah. Uh, and you could probably argue that, um, Sentinel at the front is a little bit unthemed, but then we just have Sun Giant here, right? Sun Giant just has no theme whatsoever, <laughs> and it's just sat in the middle of a heavily themed park. So, what I wanted to do to complement that is to have this ride at the back that feels like it possibly would have opened after the park in 2015. It's an add-on. It feels like it's been put almost in a parking lot. It feels like the park would have ended here, right? Uh, and they've extended it out because they wanted something. And it also sits on the sight line wherever you look, right? So, where, where from wherever you are in the park, you can see the first drop, but I 
wanted it to also feel like a bit of a hidden treasure. Most parks would show off their giggers and hyper coasters because it's like, yes, look at me. But this, I wanted it to feel like it was a bit of a journey to discovery. So... This is what I've done, and inside here, then I've I've used like this modern feeling of beams and everything. So uh, I wanted to have the orange and the blue and the pink because that's the Chachalandia colours. It feels like that's what it needed to have. Yes, it's got a name, and I r will reveal that in the final update. And inside the station, then, I've kept this nice and open. So if you remember back to uh, the hyper coaster or the, the mega coaster we did in Fundy Fun Spot and how that station was really open, I've used that as a starting base for, for this or that whole principle, that whole idea. I haven't used the design, obviously, but the principle of just being open and bland and cold. And it's actually turned out really, really quite nicely. Uh, I'm quite pleased with how this, how this has turned out. Um, and, of course, I've copied the idea of having the... Um, uh, the shop and everything on the underneath of the station because it just sort of like saves space. That's exactly how you how you want to have all of that. And so I've just kitted it out as a gift shop as you as you would. And yep, there we go. Here's our desk B. Here's desk B for the episode. <laughs> you didn't have to wait long. <laughs> it's the ride photo booth. Um, this one's slightly bigger because you've got more rows and everything. So you need to have a slightly bigger uh, photo booth. You have to have more screens and stuff. Um, in fact, I don't think this is enough screens. I've got 10 rows and I've got like 8 screens. So I might need to fix that, actually. Uh, but ultimately, yeah, it's the ride photo booth. And it's modern, it's fresh, it's clean. And that's how, exactly how I uh, how I wanted it. And I realised as well, I don't really have many games. I haven't put the roof in here, by the way, yet. Um, that's still to come. So all of this is going to be hidden. Uh, yeah, so I, we haven't got many games in the uh, park. So when I do the final touch-up stuff, uh, that's going to be one thing that I'm going to need to do is, is to do a load of uh, game stores and everything. So I just put a couple of grabber machines in here and a cash machine because we haven't got one in this area of the park. And I know that guests whinge about having a cash machine and everything. So that's what we're doing. Uh, that's what we're doing here. And then over this way, we've got a restaurant that's coming together or a grab-and-go unit as it's going to be. Um, I've just called it Hyper for now. Uh, I need to think up a name and stuff. It's just it's just there. And uh, yeah, I'm going for the same look and feel as the actual main station itself with the beams and open and exposed. This is going to be glass fronted uh, and everything. So it's going to be more of a grab and go than it is an actual uh, an actual restaurant. So of course, it needs its floor and all sorts. Uh, and then I've also just put a couple of supporting rides in. So you probably would have spotted this one um, to start with. But now I, now I know what my space and everything looks like. I've also just put a drop tower in. Now, I know it feels a bit weird having two drop towers next to each other. Uh, but one's obviously a roto tower and one uh, shoots you up. So they are different ride experiences and they're different heights, of course. So that's what we're going for. Uh, going for there. And... <laughs> there's more there's so much more uh, the maintenance area is now pretty much done I just need to put a roof on it and maybe just do some slight touching up of the um of the the whole inside and everything so uh, but yeah so I've kitted this out pretty much similarly to uh, the RMC one actually um because it's a similar height it's a sim it serves a similar purpose so you've got the the mesh flooring and everything where you'd bring the trains in but then you have an open space where you can work underneath the trains uh, along here and then you've got the stairs down and everything and it's all kitted out with whatever and you've got lifts that would move and, and all, all of the usual stuff right so you know how the <laughs> how the maintenance areas usually go and this is it from below right so you've got all of the electric cabinets and everything on on the one side uh, and then you just got let's go this way uh, then you've got all of the other stuff that you would need uh, in here and I, it's one of those i don't really want to waste piece count on maintenance areas they just need to be there to be represented like you know this this is no different as a maintenance area to the one that i did for the Eurofighter in raygate lake for example there's just as much detail in it it's just the maintenance area for that was much smaller um, and then i've also thought about the strategy of getting vehicles in and out so of course we're going to have a road eventually a service road that's going to come around here so that's going to join up into here that then gives me how this uh, how the end of the park is going to be uh, and it also helps with this idea of this being a bit unloved and, and unkempt and everything and then we've also got the queue line. So the queue line I've started to fence out. I just wanted to use the same fence throughout. Um, other than obviously the don't die fencing around the important bits. Which I need to finish off over this side. But the fencing itself is... Uh yeah, it's it's all sorted. It's all it's all done. Um, I just need to put the concrete and everything down, um, and then that that covers that off. Then just change the terrain, paint it, and and put the the foliage and stuff in. So that's all good. That's all good there. Right. So let's now talk 
things about hypercoaster so you already know then that b&m uh we've spoken about this before b&m lift chains will always weigh the train and it will adjust the lift speed in accordance to uh how it how it's going to travel through so i've mentioned in the previous update that we need to be taking the lift hills not lift hills sorry the uh, airtime hills at around 35 mile an hour and that's what this lift chain will do um the computer in it will work out the speed that it needs to be and then go from there uh, at the bottom here you've got your, your drive tires that that will feed it through into the lift hill and that makes sure then that the train hits the lift hill at the right speed so you don't get that jerk motion uh, but at the same time this is where it does all of the weighing rather than inside the station this is where it would get done and this is where the, the lift hill motor and everything is then uh, kicked in and that's that's everything that you'd go from there now I mentioned in the last update about the brake runs right so uh, here's one I prepared earlier that we can actually talk about let me just move this over so you can see on this is a real rough representation by the way of um an end of a giga or hyper <laughs> break run that you may see where think of the likes of fury uh 325 i think it is um and uh oh other giga giga coasters are available <laughs> i've gone it's gone out of my mind um but you see like they they have this really high area and then it comes down um, and then it comes down to a resting point and then into the station right so you see this quite common um, now there's a reason for that so of course we've spoken about the uh, station principles in the past right so where you have a holding break and a service break and uh, whatnot so this is where your uh, service break would be this is where your holding break would be and then you've just got all of this at the back here now why 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 well Giga coasters and hyper coasters get up such speed that they don't always lose momentum by the time they get back to the station. And the idea of this whole brake run here is to provide enough space for that train to slow down. But rather than uh, the way that Interman does it, think of the likes of uh, Millennium, Magnum, Millennium, <laughs> whichever one it is at Cedar Fair, at Cedar Point. Oh, guys, I tell you what, it's been one of them days. Uh, anyway. The way that Intamin do it is that they have to uh, bring the train to a complete stop and then they have to roll the train on through the blocks, right? So you find that the brake run is all on, uh, is all on one level. But B&M do this slightly differently. By having it raised up this way, you can have the train at full pelt on the course. It will lose momentum as it hits this top brake. And that then means that you can use this top brake as a block section rather than as a brake that has to stop the train. Which means as well that you can improve uh, capacity because this train doesn't have to fully stop before it's allowed into the next block. Whereas the Intamins that have it all on one level... Millennium Force. Uh, <laughs> I knew it would come to me. Um, so yeah, Millennium Force has to uh, has to then stop the train completely before it's allowed into the next block. So that's why B&Ms do this, right? Uh, so you can allow this to actually be a block section rather than a break section that has to come to a full stop. Now, what happens in the instance where we have a hyper... Uh, let's just get rid of that. We have a hyper like this. Well, you have the ability here to have your block section here and this is what's then going to slow the train down so again it's not going to bring it to a stop but it slows the train down enough to then crawl through this bit uh, and then you don't have to have such a high brake run at the end here um, because the train isn't doing the sort of momentum and pelt that it was doing here so that's why this is a perfectly good setup and you'll find that giga coasters and hyper coasters from B&M will use one of two strategies they'll either use the one where you've got the really high brake run or they'll use um, a, a block break that's prior to the final part of the course and then into the final break run. You see that on Candemonium um, and you also see that on Shambhala at uh, Port Ventura. But of course, then you've got Fury uh, 325 that uses the, the, the high up one. So, anyway, that's your Electron break runs. Uh, I'm hoping that all makes sense. So, final run time. Um, I don't know if I'm going to get a chance to kit these uh, two rides out, but I'm definitely going to get the actual main station and uh, the coaster ready. I want to get these done as well, but let's see what happens. Let's cut straight to it. All right, then, you guys. Done for now. Stamp is coming out, and I've kind of run out of time, but I've got a few tweaks that I'm going to still need to make. I'm going to need to do those later on. But you know what? I've not said this for a while. It's really turned out better than I thought it was going to when I first started out. 
So, yeah, we've got ourselves a name. It's Hyper Energy. And there's a bit of a story behind this one because Heartline Drop won the uh, poll over on the community tab with the name Energy. But so did J Trains with Hyper Chacho. And so I hope you guys don't mind. I've merged the two names together just so that both of you can win. And we've got ourselves Hyper Energy, which is the name of the coaster. And here it is in its glory. Now, it's kind of not so glorious over here. And I'll go through why that is in a moment. It's not even finished over this side. Uh, so, yeah, let's talk about that later. Uh, but this is the area that I've been focusing on and this is the bit where I wanted it to feel like it was tacked on to the end of the park as a last minute addition and it really it really feels that way um it really feels like the end of the park would have been here uh, and we've just added this bit last minute to the actual park itself and it just feels so correctly out of place I love it I love it I love it I love it um so we've done the two rides here uh, we've got our drop tower and we've got our claw ride I can't remember what it's called in real life um gyro whatever it's the one that kind of does wonderland anyway uh, so we've got those two supporting attractions that are living here uh, it's kind of like as i said buried at the back of the back of the park and it just feels like they've just slapped those in because they needed something to absorb the crowds in this area and of course we've got our uh, our station that's sitting pride of place in the actual uh, plaza area itself i mean just look how tacked on and unloved and uninspired this is but it's like perfectly uninspired but you do get an awesome view of the lift hill uh, from here so uh, every cloud and has a silver lining and all that right <laughs> so we then come over to our um food unit so if you remember back to when we did the inverted coaster we had this food unit that never closes it's the idea that it's a foyer and the only thing inside is what closes and if you remember back to courtyard when we did raygate lake that's exactly the same principle so this is a, a shop that has no front has no doors, has no shutters or anything like that. It would always be permanently open. You can come in and sit down. But what would close would be the stalls that live behind it here. So uh, this is an always open seating area. And I've just kitted it out with just some stuff. I wanted this to be a bit of a loose design. I didn't want this to be too intense. So I've just put some bins and some trays and stuff around. Uh, put some benches in uh, just to make it look a little bit decent. Um, made them look off colour as well just so that they are <laughs> just out of place. And I decided to call this Hyper Eats. I just decided to add Eats on the end of the name. I couldn't think of anything else to really call it so uh, that's all I've done just added eats on the end and then the actual plaza itself uh, plaza area I quite like I, you know it's nice and open it's got a bit of personality because we've got a bit of um, a swoopiness going on over here awesome ride view and of course that well, other way uh, you can also see the drop tower from here as well so uh, the area feels quite complete now the two flat rides they don't have names and so uh, I'm going to tell you how we can name those uh, in a moment. Um, at the end of the video, I will go through how we're going to pick names for them. Now, let's just have a look at the queue line. Uh, so the queue line itself, I've now finished. Uh, we've got our sign and we've got all of the stuff that, the, you know, the compliance signs and everything that we have in here. Uh, the queue is now just this horrible cattle pen. You would not want to queue in this on a busy day. <laughs> <laughs> because it would just be vile uh, but I've made sure that I've designed the queue in enough ways that uh, if it was a quiet day you wouldn't necessarily need to use the entirety of the queue so for example you could open it up here and just have people coming straight up the stairs uh, you could open it up to this bit where they come uh, round here uh, and then down this way you can bring up the queue down this way and open up the cattle pens and come back. Uh, and you've also got all of this extension as well, which is very, very similar. This can be configured in so many different ways. I mean, if you can imagine that there would be gates and stuff on here that you could open and close parts of the pen. Uh, I took the inspiration of the queue line for uh, Stealth at Thought Park in the sense that that's just configurable in so many different ways that you can accommodate any crowd level and make sure that the queue is still conforming to all of your usual formulas and everything. And then I just added some water in here. I don't remember actually if this was already in uh, in the last update, but I've added water regardless at some point in the build process. Uh, <laughs> it's there. So yeah, that's all there. Um, I don't think I mentioned it in the last update either. Custom supports. We've got custom supports on the on this bad boy. So uh, of course we've got the, the lift hill and I've just custom supported this. And then I've uh, reduced the number of supports in different places custom supported in other places and then you'll notice that you've got custom supports here because the uh the in-game supports just disappear right so anyway that's the thing i don't know if i've already if i've already told you that uh, i'm losing my mind it's episode 13 it's got to be unluckier for some right <laughs> and then we're going to come over into uh the station itself 
So uh, I always wanted this station to be open, always wanted it to be stark, I always wanted it to be, to be cold, because it is a hypercoaster station, right? I could have done, gone down the Energy Landia route of uh, theming it to something like sci-fi or, you know, that heavy, that heavy storytelling element, but actually I quite like the Behemoth station. I quite like how that, how that turned, or how that is. So this is how this has turned out. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's awesome. I quite, uh, I quite like how this is. And we're going to come uh, this way, actually, into the maintenance area. So you've already seen in here, uh, all I've done is just a few bits of touching up, uh, put in some of these uh, service counters and stuff, and then just in here, just mild tweaks and touching up. As I said, people tend to not to come in here too much, so uh, I just leave it low, low detail now. Uh, let's save the piece count for another time, right, for something else that's more important. Uh, and then we've just got the shed area here. Now, not shed area, sorry, the service yard here. Now, I was a little bit... Um, unsure as to whether I wanted to hide this service area from the brake run but looking at some of the POVs of some of the other coasters you actually do see stuff like this um, this it does fly in the face of what we're trying to achieve in the sense of hide as much of your service area away as possible uh, especially when it comes to Chachalandia and, and what we've done with the effort and stuff of elsewhere uh, but because this is a tacked on part of the park I didn't want to quite have this as a parking lot coaster where there's no love and care put into it but I did want it to be tacked on um i've just noticed that i need to fix this in a in a future episode as a fence so that is definitely not a sealed off secure area <laughs> um okay so shop wise inside the shop then uh, again it's just touching up stuff that's been uh, going on in here uh, i wanted to keep the stark brick just to give it a bit of personality but then of course the rest is all is all in here this is actually blue i don't know why this is looking green um I guess it just must be the way that it interacts with other colours in the room, but yeah, it's <laughs> whatever. Um, so we've just got the gifts and everything, you've already seen this uh, in here. And then I've just done some touching up to the ride photos. Of course I've included the actual photos from the ride, so that's all in there. Put all of the staff in and it's now all ready and good to go. And yes, Desk B is there. Uh, so that's, that's all that done. So this is the area as it looks from here now what i oh, was what looks from here actually need to stop and show you what the area looks like right <laughs> just come on <laughs> what's, what's this all about um so that's the entrance to the area uh, but then you've also got this side subsidiary path that comes up this way uh, and the idea is just we're trying to hide the the back end of the the tudor area restaurant and whatever right so uh, we've just got this beautiful little path that comes up here um uh, but we've also got a shortcut path that's here as well. So I've just put a, a hyper energy uh, sign along here just to say, yes, it's up, it's up this way. It's up this small path. Um, and actually, I quite like how it feels like you won't end up walking through a wood. There's not much monetization of the areas going on. There's not much of anything. It's just like you are walking into the middle of nowhere to ride a coaster at the back of the park. Uh, so what I've done as well, I've put all of the fences, so I finished this off. Do you remember back in the inverted uh, episode, I said, oh yeah, we'll have to come back and do the fences at some point. Well, that rooster came home, or that came home to roost, right? <laughs> so I needed to finish that this time. So that's what I've done here. Uh, we've got it all along, all along this way. And the other thing that I really, really like about this coaster now uh, is that you can see it from everywhere, but you don't know how to get to it, obviously. So even though I didn't want this to be like the shining, whoops, the shining star of the entire park, it's actually ended up being the shining star because no matter where you are, you can actually see the drop, but you don't really know where it is. Um, so like in the pirate area behind here. So yeah, it's it's looking really, really, really awesome. And guys, this is uh, this is Chachalandia from the very top, right? So uh, this this is how the entire park has happened or has come together. I, I forgive the the clipping and stuff of, of what I need to sort out. Um, but this is how the park has come together over the last thirteen episodes, and it's just been such an awesome, awesome ride. And I reckon we can probably squeeze out one more build, uh, and that's in the back area here. Uh, so I'm going to put a pole up, and it's going to be our last pole. It's going to be our last build. So what is this going to come in this area? But then that's going to be it uh, for the actual rides. We then need to just build all of the service areas, finish the car park, do our final touches, and then you guys can get your hands on it to play with on the workshop. And I'm so excited to see what you guys think of it. Uh, so let's pop some glamour shots in for uh, this episode so you can see the, the hypercoaster in all of its glory. Uh, guys, thank you so much for getting to the end of the video. If you haven't already spotted it, I've started like a, a membership thing. It's just to say thank you. Um, 
kind of thing. It's only a quid a month. You can dip in and out whenever whenever you want to. Would really, really appreciate the support. Thank you to everybody that signed up so far. You absolutely rock. I love you all. Um, no obligation, of course. You know, it's it's completely it's completely up to you. Uh, as I said, you can dip in and out whenever whenever you want to. Um, and I do also post some exclusive stuff on the community tab just for you guys. So if you uh, our members, then you'll be able to see extra screenshots and stuff like that. Um, but I'm not hiding content behind paywall. I don't. I don't want to do that sort of stuff. Like it's a bit like Patreon, but different. Anyway, thank you for getting to the end of the video, uh, guys. I will see you next week. We're about to go for a ride on Hyper Energy. So until we speak again, look after yourselves. Episode number thirteen wasn't too bad. It wasn't too unlucky, was it? See you soon. Bye bye.